Now, in today's video, I'm going to make some new predictions about the successor to the FX3. And I'm going to tell you what I think will be on it, when I think it will be announced, and when I think it will be released. Hey, great news to all A7S III users. Well, there's a new firmware update. Yeah, this one's version 4. And it has a few things that we didn't have before. For example, um, write digital signature. Yeah, this is going to allow you to pay Sony even more money and be able to put a digital signature on your photos in your A7S III, as if you use your A7S III for photos. But more importantly, we finally get custom LUTs for the A7S III. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Oh, and you can now flag your movie takes even on the fly. That's a pretty cool feature. Oh, and they've also added some more grid lines. Yeah, the golden circle. Yeah, well, that's cool too. But before you upgrade, you might want to consider a couple of things. First, they have disabled a few features, so you're going to want to read about those and see if you're using them. I'm not. Oh, and you might also want to know that when I upgraded my camera, well, it could no longer sync up to my phone. Yeah, there's a bug there. And I'm not the only one. I noticed that my friend Paul Feinberg, who I met at NAB, well, he's having the same issue. But he'll also teach you, if you'd like, how to upgrade your firmware. And you can watch his video right over there, because I'm not going to make one of those videos. Because in this video, I really want to spend some time making some predictions about where Sony's going, specifically with the A7S series. Two years ago, I did a video in which I predicted that Sony was abandoning the A7S line. And if you've been following along, well, the FX3 has been getting a lot more updates and a lot more love from Sony than the A7S3. Yeah, even with these updates. Now, when I made those predictions two years ago, it's not like I had a crystal ball or anything. It just seemed very clear to me that because the FX3 has a fan inside of it, that it could handle a lot more processing power in the future than the A7S III. And I think I was right. And even if Sony someday does slap the A7S IV logo onto something, it's never going to be what the FX3 successor will be. Now, I don't have any inside information, but you know, I have been around for a long time. And you let me know whether you agree with my predictions or not. Let's start with a few things that I think we can all agree will be on the new FX3 successor. It's gonna have all the new AI focusing features that we've seen in all the other Sony cameras that have come out in the last year or two. It's gonna have the screen from the A7R5. In fact, it might even have a little better screen, but at least it's gonna flip out and turn in all the funky ways that the A7R5 does now. But if the camera came out with just a few things like that, well, I don't think it would sell very well and people would be a little disappointed. I think it's gonna have to have at least one, if not two of the five following features. A big feature that would just cause this camera to fly off the shelf would of course be built-in neutral density filters. It's something we've wanted for years. In fact, it's something we used to have on all of the old camcorders, but that feature disappeared when we went to mirrorless cameras. It's got to come back. Because as soon as it does, well, it'll render all those other cameras a camera that people will really, really feel like they need to upgrade. But I can hear some of you saying, oh, they can't do that and image stabilization at the same time. And I would say, what makes you think they can't do both of those things? Yeah, I think they can. And I think they will. If not in this camera, well, in a camera soon to come. But I was thinking the other day that maybe Sony is going to do away with the need for neutral density filters. And how would they do that? Well, instead of having a dual ISO, they could have uh, three ISOs. So instead of having one super high, like in the A7S III right now, has one at 12,800, and then they have uh, their normal one at 640, well, you know what? It'd be really great if we had a third ISO that was way down like five something like that, or a range down in here where we could just simply turn the ISO down, turn down the sensitivity of the camera, and we wouldn't need those neutral density filters. Now, I don't even know if that's possible, but you know what? I didn't even think that dual ISOs was possible. So Sony can either put in neutral density filters or they can come up with a way to eliminate the need for neutral density filters. That would also be a game changer. The next would be global shutter. Yeah, that would be another great big feature for the FX3, but only if it didn't compromise the uh, dynamic range. The dynamic range shrinks because they added a global shutter. Well, I think that people would be a little upset by that as well. 
I personally would probably give up a stop for global shutter because I would really like to have a global shutter, but I think I'm in the minority. I think they'd have to test it out that way they can actually say with a uh, outline, yeah, it has the same dynamic range as it does now. Again, if they could do that, that's another feature that would cause this camera to just fly off the shelf. The third big feature they could add would be open gate. Yeah, allowing more pixels to be taken from the top and the bottom over the 16 by nine aspect ratio. That is gonna require a lot more processing power, but if they could put a bigger processor in the A7X3, which I think they can because of the fan, well, they could certainly give us open gate. And I know that's a feature that would cause a lot of people to upgrade. The fourth big feature for some would be some more megapixels. Now, I'm not talking about crazy megapixel sums, but it would be nice to shoot in maybe 5K or 6K. I doubt that they would go all the way to 8K because then uh, your pixels are getting a lot smaller and your low light sensitivity is going to suffer. But if you were able to shoot in 5K or 6K without losing sensitivity, well, that would be a big plus. It would also allow you to shoot in dynamic stabilization rather than just active stabilization because of the crop. Now, the fifth big feature that I think would cause these cameras to sell massively would be internal 32-bit float recording. And I believe that it would be awesome if Sony came out with a little sort of DJI mic kind of thing, uh, maybe with a lav on it or something that went wirelessly straight into the camera. Yeah, that would do two things. One, it would cause uh, me to want to upgrade my camera system to that because uh, then you're not hooking up all these other things. And it would make it so that I'd have to buy from Sony and I have to pay their exorbitant prices. But you know what? If you gave me that internal 32-bit float wirelessly uh, into the camera, uh, well, I'd have to buy it. So my prediction for the FX3 is that it's gonna have at least two of those five features. I also am gonna predict, sadly, that it's not going to have all five of those features. I just don't think, I just don't think they can do that, or maybe it's that they won't do that. Either way, wouldn't it be great if they did that? But I also believe that there's going to be some other great features that are going to be icing on the cake for this new camera. For example, I think we'll see an optional EVF. Yeah, if we're gonna get rid of the A7S line, well, a lot of people like having an EVF. Why not have one that you can buy for an absorbent amount of money from Sony to add to the FX3 successor? Wouldn't that be cool? That way, people who want it can buy it, and those that don't, won't. I think we'll see some other features like some internal memory. I think it would be great to always have a backup running on your camera. That way you could only put one card in, record in both places, and then later if there was a problem with your card, well, you could go back to the camera. Yeah, I would like that feature. And then things like pre-record, what happened to that? That was a great feature where basically you can have the camera on pre-record settings so you're constantly recording, but then if you hit the shutter button, well, it actually saves the recording for let's say 15 seconds in the past. That's a feature we've had on a number of cameras and I think we should see it on the new FX3. I also think we'll see a bump up in the frame rate. Instead of 120 frames per second and 4K, I think we'll see something around 240 without any crop. It would be great if this camera also had SDI out, but I don't think that it's gonna have that. I think they're gonna save that for up the line in the cinema line. And then there's other features that I don't think we're gonna see, but I would love to see, and that would be another USB-C port that we could use maybe for focusing or for monitoring, yeah. But I would like to see some other monitoring functions like false color or waveforms. And you know what? That's something I think we have to see in this next camera. Oh, and a feature that I think would be a must for the new camera would be some sort of collar that would allow you to switch between video mode, photo mode, or s &Q. Yeah, this is a great little feature on the a7 IV, and I would love to see it on everything going forward. And I think they will. But now for my prediction about when we're gonna see this camera. And I would like to say that we'd see it in 2025, but you know what? I think it's gonna come out in early 2026. And I'm gonna go far as to say February announcement and an April release at NAB 2026. Hey, but let's hope I'm wrong. Let's hope it comes sooner. Well, those are my predictions. Let me know what your predictions are in the comments. In the meantime, you can watch this little video right over here while we all wait to see what Sony does. Hey. Thanks for stopping by.